we're coming towards the end. As a writer or creative person, what do you feel like, I'd love for everyone to answer this if they can, what do you feel like you brought forward from the Breaking Bad experience into your career as an artist and writer and all the different creative hats that you wear? So I'm going to start with you, Sam. Gosh. <laughs> I've learned so much being on the show. I mean, look, 99% of what I know about writing and television, I learned through events and working on this show. I feel the same way. Yeah, I mean, I remember when I first, um, I think I first saw the pilot or something like that, that it felt like a great premise. And it felt like a great, um, you know, a sort of a, a revenge fantasy, uh, the middle class man, and uh, a, what do they call it? They, a fa it's a fantasy. And it, it seemed very clear to me that like, oh yeah, this sort of middle class guy gets to be a drug dealer and all that. But then I was so impressed by the, by the no, that's not what we're doing. We're not jumping to the, to, we're not cutting to the fucking, as you would say. It's we what we're doing, the process, <laughs> the process. <laughs> The love of detail, the love of the moment to moment, um, that you know that Vince just all, held us all account to account to, which is just like what what what's interesting about this next moment, not some moment that you're setting up or teeing up and stuff like that. Um, in terms of storytelling, that letting other people, you know, hiring great people and and letting them do their jobs. But I mean, to me, it's just, it's just mostly like, it's just this cloud of what I'm not doing in my life that when, when I, you know, it's like, what would Vince do? What would, what would work on Breaking Bad? And it's like, oh shit, I'm not doing that. <laughs> oh God. So it's an immense <laughs> guilt. Just it's guilt, it's shame. shame. Yeah, he taught me shame. <laughs> you got a chance. Um, <laughs> you got a chance. Yeah, I have a seen it. Uh, for, for me, what I carry forward, um, I mean, I, I really feel like, as Sam did, like I learned everything that I know about writing and crafting uh, story and character from Vince and from this experience in the room. Um, and what I've taken moving forward is the love, the obsession of excruciating detail mm. and, and a love of breaking story organically as opposed to whatever that language is that I don't speak, which is A story, B story, C story, runner. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean anything if you don't know where the characters' heads are at, and if you don't know why they're motivating to do the things that they do, and if you're not willing to sit there and suffer through the, you know, the elemental, uh, intimate, excruciating conversations that get to the heart of the matter. So that's that's what I'm carrying forward into my work that I do now. Um, that, that kind of attention to detail and craft and character and um, always remembering why uh, you're telling the story you're telling and not trying to impose anything on it from the outside. Mm. Yeah, what, what they said. Uh, <laughs> plus, I mean, it's, it's, there's, so, there's so much that we could say. I mean, it, yeah. it was, it was a, the, I'd say one of the things I learned, uh, I had never been, been in a writer's room before, uh, and I learned the value of a safe room and the fact that we could all sit in that room and say what was on our minds and maybe pitch 50 terrible ideas to the one great one. That meant an awful lot. And the fact that Vince was always willing to pursue any avenue, any avenue that you bring up. He, 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 he almost never said, let's not go there. Let's, he's, let's, let's look through the consequences of this idea and to really spend the time to think about uh, what these people would do in real life and what, what really, what, what, what did this mean? The, another thing that I, that I learned, and we could go on forever, is to look backwards instead of looking forwards. Oh, yeah. In other words, a lot, as we went on, the more we went on, the more I realized that some of the ideas that we got most excited about were looking back at things that were already in the story. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, one example is, is, is in the pilot, you see that Walt worked on uh, work that uh, he contributed to, to work that won the Nobel Prize. And you say, well, how did this happen? And the more times you can come up with questions about the characters, a little, 
little things or what was that character doing when they were off screen? Uh, how did this person get like this? Uh, there are two, we see two chicken brothers in the Poyos Hermanos logo. Who's the other chicken brother? <laughs> and just stuff like that, just to really go back through the world and take it all very seriously uh, instead of grasping for the thing, the low-hanging fruit. Oh, this will be exciting. Let's have this happen. Uh, and it's, it's a certain dogged, uh, a certain dogged quality uh, to, be, to, to be, just follow every idea to its logical conclusion. And sometimes that was incredibly frustrating uh, because sometimes I would have the feeling in the room, this, is, this particular idea is never going to happen. It's not going to work. Sometimes I was right. And sometimes I was completely wrong. So I think there's a certain uh, openness that, that I learned from Breaking Bad. Trust. Trust, yeah. Trust that, you know, I think that that's something that's, you know, having written about television for a long time, that um, when people feel free to throw out ideas and explore them, and, and there's a sense of trust and camaraderie like that. That tends to produce a better show, I think, doesn't it? I, mean, I always felt maybe like I'm crazy. <laughs> I, I, I always felt like I got undue credit for that. It's it's not for being a nice guy or anything. It just uh, it, it, why would you shut people down if they're you're paying them to be there and give you their best, and then say that was stupid. We're not doing that. When people could, do that to me, I'm going <laughs> to stop talking. You know. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I, there are people who do that. No, no. Doesn't sound like you've been one of them, though. Yeah, well, you know what? <laughs> the interesting thing about this job is there's no one right way to do it, and that's one of the many things I love about it. There's no one right way to do it. But you know, as for me, I mean, what did I learn? I learned everything. I mean, I, I mean, I wouldn't have been able to have the base knowledge to do this job if I hadn't, if I hadn't uh, been on the X Files for seven years. Uh, but I still was felt so far behind the eight ball when I got the job. I, I didn't. Couldn't believe they were going to let me direct the pilot. I thought, oh God, this is, I'm going to. I just, fear drove me. <laughs> every, <laughs> every minute of every day, fear drove me. Uh, but I, I learned so much from these folks. I did, you know, you know, I just, it, it was such, and, and some of the, most of the very best moments were, were moments I had. I was, I was in proximity to them when they happened, mm. you know, when they were hatched or birthed or whatever. But I just, uh, I remember that time, uh, George. I remember uh, we had the, the scene where the, the uh, DE agent, uh, where, the, where the head is on oh, the yeah. tortoise. Oh. <laughs> the, the, uh, this is one I always remember. We had the we had the head on the tortoise, and we had come up with that as a group in the in the in the room. And I was I was I, was, I, I literally said we can go home early today because this is like the coolest image. <laughs> I you know. It was arrived at, you know, with the with the hive mind, and we got the head and the tortoise, and I literally said, "Let's go home early. This is great." <laughs> and then George says, and then he touches the head, and the head blows up, and I said, "Oh man, now you've gone too far. That's just, <laughs> let's just go. Let's stop while we're ahead." While we're ahead. I'm like, <laughs> "What? That's too far." <laughs> and it was, it was like, and then it was like, George "Wait a minute, that's up. genius." Yeah. Just I learned that. Uh, I hell, I think I knew it already, but I, I had it proven to me time and time again that that uh, just when you are surrounded by people who are smarter than you are, anything's possible, just so long as you keep listening to them. Never quit while you're ahead. And you know what? <laughs> On a tortoise. While you're ahead. <laughs> I'm tempted to get up and storm out of this. <laughs> out of this, just because of that joke. I'm sorry, <laughs> I had to. Someone had to do the corniest joke. It should be me. Uh, Jennifer, what was? Uh... Uh, well, I was really lucky because this was my first writing job. You know, I started as an assistant and then uh, started writing in season three, and then came on full time in season four. Um, so, kind of my entire, you know, grow like growing as a writer when you're finding your voice happened on the show, and I'm very, very lucky in that sense. So, specifically, the stuff that really resonated for me is the idea that everything kind of comes from character. So a lot of people always say, how do you, like when people ask me about writing, they're like, oh, well, how do you figure out your theme? And I never think of theme because I just, it's about, well, what's the story I'm telling about this character and where does that lead them? And then those themes come out yes. because it's like whatever that character is looking for, that ends up being your theme. So just, as we said, always grounding it in character, that's going to inform plot, themes, even your setting sometimes, like all that stuff. Um, and then personally, it sort of taught me to trust my own voice, you know, because coming in as the new kid, 
even though I had been on the show, I was the new writer. So you kind of, you want to prove yourself, but you also don't want to step on toes. And so, and you're also kind of confused as to what your voice might be. And just being empowered by Vince and the rest of the writers who were all very generous with me because there are rooms where a new person coming in, especially one who's come up, could be treated as, you know, maybe a little bit of a threat or, or, or not as nurtured by the staff. Um, and so having all those people believe in me and support me and while I was still kind of getting my feet was really helpful and it made me trust myself more. So that was probably the most valuable thing I got out of the show. So. Fantastic. Uh, I surprisingly, surprisingly learned nothing. <laughs> George? <laughs> it happens. I think uh, the thing you come away with is uh, when I first started out writing was worrying about what, is the, what does the audience want? What is the big thing that they're going to love? Um, I think when you have a collection of people that you really trust, you just don't even think, don't worry about that. It's just as long as everybody, we always got worked very hard to get everybody on the same page of is this, the, is this the idea to go with? Is this the character direction? Is this trust the group you're with and then don't even worry about what the audience reaction is? Because uh, I think as long as we trusted each other, everything else worked out. Which I guess is a good prelude because I was going to say, you know, trust your audience because <laughs> we paid such attention to the details um, and to, I think, you know, um, really focusing on what, like every moment I feel like to us on screen was like a precious moment and infusing every moment with what is the emotion and not just sort of putting and filling in the pieces of the puzzle to tell the story, which is hard enough. But, you know, if you're going to take five seconds of Scream's time, you better damn well be sure that there's an emotion there and it may be very, very subtle and in most cases it is, but trust the audience to pick up on that because audiences do. And to me, I felt like that was like uh, both before and after Breaking Bad, you find this tendency to like, well, the audience is not going to get that, not going to understand, go for the big thing or the, the obvious way. And uh, I think what, what you know, Vince taught me, and I think it was really to focus on just telling something that is, has an emotional content and the audience will pick up on, mm -hmm. on where you are. And so just that, that kind of attention, that exacting attention to detail. So. I wish more people took that note, if you will, because I think that there's a tendency now on TV to kind <clears> of just <throat> expand, not just the running time, but just kind of like luxuriate in whatever time you have. And it's, it, I just think that one of the things I appreciate about Breaking Bad is how it was just, there was such an attention to the craft and to every moment and how each moment built on each other. And it was... It all felt very uh, time well spent. Good. Sounds like making it and watching it f for sure. It was. I, I feel so lucky to have been part of it. I just, uh, I, man, I just, uh, you know, I'm getting misty, uh, not literally, but kind of <laughs> feeling kind of misty about uh, uh, just the fact that it's, you know, that it's, uh, it was so painful. <laughs> but it's, uh, I, but, I, but it was, these guys will tell you that half the time, be like, oh, God, I don't know what to do. <laughs> but I, I, it was so, in hindsight, the pain of the guy I worked with, the director I worked with on the X-Files, Rob Bowman, used to say, the pain fades, but the glory remains. And, and that, that really is true. I mean, it's all I remember is uh, how great it was. I don't remember all the pain. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think we can leave on a better note than that. So thank you all so much. This thank was you. awesome. Thank you.